Need I say more? Welcome back, folks. Good to see you cats and ladies and gents here once again to the host who never sleeps. It's been uh, 48 hours on this uh, neck blew up now. Set neck. This guitar's got a set neck on it now. Uh, I'm going to take a, an extra step and do something here that, uh, well, I'll show you. We're going to take the clamps and stuff off and look it over good. Talk about it a little bit. And then I'll show you what I'm going to do here. And I'll tell you why I'm going to do it. So stay tuned for that. And I'll bring you, get the camera, get you over here closer where you can see what's going on. And we'll start uh, getting all this crap off of this thing and see what it looks like. Are we on? <laughs> Good to see you folks again. Yeah, I got on my pants, uh, uh, comfy pants here. You know how it goes, man, on these comfy nights, uh, win winter nights when you, uh, when you, uh, are in for the night and your plans are not to have to go back out anymore have to get real comfy as I can uh, ain't that sexy baby I mean you gotta admit that's sexy right there especially with my fat gut in the picture so uh, here we go let's take these off and see what we see what we've got here now I need my my neck stand back here. What did I do with it? Here it is. Something to hold that puppy up. Yes, sir. Good to see you guys and gals again. Looking mighty fine you are. I see a little glue that got on the fretboard there. We have to get there's some clear up on, on the fret. Some glue came up through those holes too, but I'm going to rework that whole fretboard, clean it up. It's got a lot of DNA on there. But, uh, y'all, man, I'll bring you all over here closer in a minute. And I'll show you the extra step I'm going to take. Uh, that I hadn't thought about doing until, well, I've been thinking about it, yeah. You know, I need to sweep this, vacuum this guitar out. There's a lot of crap moving around inside there that I can hear. Had a little bit of squeeze out in these corners here. I didn't want any glue to get in there, but... I had that tenon all glued up, and when I shoved it back into the mortise, it kind of squeezed some out this side, too. And got a little bit down in there, but uh, it won't hurt anything. It'll work just fine as wine, baby. It all looks good. This uh, area here that was all sunk down in, I think that was due to that brace broke inside of there. It was just failing. It looks flat across there now. Looking mighty fine. Mighty pretty. But, here is a very important something we want to see. Let me get to sit down here and look at this. Yeah, man. 50 thousandths clearance. And that's okay, that's a lot. You know, that's quite a bit, but, like I said before, we don't know how much deflection we're going to get right here. Like I said in the other video, when you go tightening those strings up, you know, putting that guitar under string tension, all acoustic guitars do it, every one. They belly up to some extent here. And we don't know. I mean, we've never seen this guitar with strings on it. It feels solid, but, you know, but that's still good. I need to make a saddle for it. And I wish that you guys could stand right here and hold your hand right here tap that and man you can actually feel a lot of air coming up out of there now let me explain right here what's going on got tape on here on both sides uh, as you know down in this crack there's a crack right there okay where the neck seats up again the body there's a crack down there all right we know that there's wood down in that crack that's not sealed it's open to the elements it's open to skin oil uh humidity dust whatever is going to get in there over time and it's going to work on that unfinished wood down in there the part of it on the neck and what little bit of it's on the body of the guitar right you know right in, in that crack so what i'm doing here i got a little pipette nozzle here you can see that i'm stretching it out now so it'll fit on fit on the glue bottle got thick viscosity cyanoacrylate glue 
CA glue. It's very thick. And all I'm going to do, I don't want glue to run down in there. That's why I'm using thick. I just want to put a little bead of glue up that crack and let that set and that will seal that and do the other side flop it over and do the other side and that'll seal all the elements and everything out of here and moisture and everything you know normally when a when a neck is put on a guitar usually they put the neck on the guitar they assemble the whole thing and then they finish it okay so that crack has got a thick coat of finish all over it this is not the case. The neck has been finished, the guitar is finished, but there's wood down just just inside that crack is where it starts. And a lot of wood that's not got any finish on it. So all I'm going to do is put a thick, uh, or not a thick, I'm going to use thick glue and put a really small bead down through here. And uh, seal that from the out outer elements. i got to get my nozzle stretched out here enough and get it on the glue bottle. And I'll bring you back and we will begin. Hold on. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. Probably not very well. But here we go. Sorry folks. <laughs> Blocking your view again, I know. Sometimes... And there's no way around that. I can hit that with a tiny bit of sandpaper and really bring it to life, make it look much better. So I've just been taking this ice pick and going around in, in these uh, inlay holes. And they're pretty deep where that screw head sat down in there. I'm going to have to fill that with glue. And that's what I'm going to do. That's what I decided to do. I'm just going to put glue in it in both holes and uh, let the glue set until it starts to set up. And then I can shove the inlays down in there and the glue will keep the inlays from falling down in there too far. Come brand day. Does that make sense? At least that's the plan. I think it'll work. So uh, there again, no need for you to stay around and me bore you completely to death while we sit and wait for that glue to semi, semi set, <laughs> if there is such a thing. So uh, that's all I'm doing now. I might polish the frets next, or I may just wait till I get those in. Those inlays are so small, I didn't measure them, but I think they're five millimeter in diameter. And I'm just going to let that set up and... Uh, here they are. I doubt you can. Yeah, maybe you can see that. That's one of them. See how tiny they are. And they are super thin, too. I, I don't think you'll be able to see the, the thickness of them. They are really, really thin. So, yeah, I don't want them to fall down in there too far. So, doing it this way, once that glue starts to get a little bit hard, I'll set them in there then. I'll bring you back for that. But I'm just going to have to set and let it set up a little more first. You know what? I checked those, and they are 7 millimeter. I don't know if you can see that. It says 7.6, but I bumped it. But they're 7 millimeters what they are. And these inlays that I took out of here, they're this one. Man, they're so tiny. They are so thin, and they're not even round anymore. I doubt you can see that, but it's. I just. I want to put new inlay in there. Screw that, man. I got a couple of new ones here now. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and put new ones in it. Uh, I don't know. Let me zoom you in here. That glue hasn't started to set yet, but... Of course, I'm going to have to sand that down because this didn't go flat and square into the hole. But that's okay. Once the glue sets up, we can... Uh, Sand those all flush with the top of the fretboard. So it's no big deal. Let me see which side of that looks the best. The other side, of course. New inlay. Brand spanking new inlay. Hope this one fits better. Yeah, it did. No, it didn't. Well, yeah, it's okay. 
both of them are in there sideways, but that's okay because I can take, like I say, take sandpaper once the glue sets up. I take sandpaper and sand those down flush with the, uh, the top of the fretboard. They're not sticking up very much, but a little bit. But it's all good, man. We're still okay. That'll look better, I think. If you could see these, I mean, they are super freaking thin. And they're not round. Maybe you can see that. They're not even round anymore. Well, this one, this one's pretty round. This one here, I don't know if you can see that or not. It's chipped all to shit. So, I, you just, I'm going to throw those away and go with brand new, brand new dots. I think we'd be better off. So, there again, waiting on the glue to dry. I will see you then. So, I figured I might as well go ahead and polish a few frets. We're getting closer and closer to the end of this journey. Finally. Probably seems like forever to the owner. I really didn't intend on getting sick. You can uh, use this stuff on your fretboard too. I mean, like I said in other older videos, it's amazing the stuff you can do with this polish, man. Use it to take scratches out of your finish. Uh, polish frets, you can... It's got a, it's lightly abrasive, very, very lightly abrasive, and you know, you got a little fine scratches in your finish, rub a little bit of this on there, rubbing circular motions and kind of big circles, take it completely out, just unbelievable stuff, I use it for everything, man, and uh, very happy with it. I got the inlays in, by the way. Here's what I'm talking about. Happich Semi-Chrome Polish. I think you can see that. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you can see the box better. Here you go. You see that? Happich Semi-Chrome Polish. Best shit they ever made. I'm telling you. Makes these frets look like brand new. I say this thing's going to need frets, a fret job. Well, it depends a lot on how much it's played, you know. But they're up the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, along in that area. They're showing significant wear. Now, you know, a lot of that has to do with how long, how much it's played, how hard it's played. The harder you play, the faster you're going to wear your frets out. If you play very loud, very hard, driving, you're, you're going to wave your frets out sooner. See if you can hear this. Listen to this. It's worse on this side. You hear that rag catching on the... The frets are sticking out too far. Reason being... There, hear it? There you go. The reason they're sticking out and sharp is because the fretboard has dried up. It shrunk. The frets didn't move. The fretboard got littler. And they got some sharp edges there. We're going to take care of that. I wanted to show you that. I hope the camera got it. I'll take you through a little bit of this. S see how that is coagulated around that bottle, around the threads? Can you see that? It's linseed oil. The stuff, uh, it solidifies. You dig? It solidifies and seals the board. I like to put a coat of it on there. Leave it about three to five minutes and come back and lightly rub that coat off. And then let that dry. And it, it solidifies and protects that board from all those nasty outer elements that we talk about so much. Plus it makes it look great too. Makes it feel better. And this board's dying for a drink, man. I mean, it really, really needed it bad. 
the entire guitar was actually quite thirsty. It won't be long now. We'll be setting this puppy up. Uh, like I said, i got to make a saddle for it yet. I think he wants a bone. I don't know. I can't remember what he said. A bone saddle or a tusk one. I might have to check with him again on that. I'll make whatever he wants. It's going to have a really, it should have a really high saddle now, too. And that saddle should be way higher than it was. You saw the little sliver of a saddle the thing had in it when it came here. Well, it's going to have a really tall saddle in it now, and the action should remain very low. You can have a high saddle and low action if the guitar is set up right. Let me get this, this bridge back here, too, with this stuff. This is good, good stuff. Yes, sir. All right, let's let that set up there now. And uh, like I say, I'll give it three to five minutes. Get the lid back on this fire hazard stuff, man. Spontaneous combustion liquid. Get the lid on that shit. Let that set for three to five minutes. And uh, there's no need for me to keep you here for that. But I will bring you back and show you what it looks like after it sets. I mean, after it dries, I'll wipe it off. The seat's not completely dried up yet, but check those here. You can see the, the wear in those frets there. See that? It's not very bad yet, but I'm going to need attention pretty soon. But look how that board cleaned up, man. All the fingerprints are gone. The frets look like brand new frets, other than those up at the end there with dents in them. There's the inlay I put in. The two bottom last ones there. Uh, the bridge looks good. I men seed oiled it. <sighs> Looking mighty fine. Next time, I think we might get strings and start setting the nut action, string action, and uh, I'll make a saddle for it. I'll show you some of that, bring you along for it. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers. Hope to see you there.